Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Angelos Nikolaou, and I'm going to be presenting uh, this topic. Uh, it's essentially a position paper on a minute detail, but maybe some things could be a bit generalized uh, to similar issues. Um, so uh, our motivation is this, right? We, we are going, uh, we are already or going to be distant. Uh, and dates are a fundamental uh, element in our data and our uh, reasoning, and they're going to be used in mass. Uh, we also have another question, which is how much could the data make us, allow us to infer the dates, which has to do with how much are things related to time. And, uh, and it all begins by, by measuring things. Uh, so the data that inspired us uh, is uh, the Monasterium uh, Corpus, which is uh, half a million documents, all uh, CI charters, uh, and uh, out of those, we took a thousand charters randomly for quality control of our corpus. We found 2,211 dates that were associated with a specific tag. And, and this is the kind of stuff we found, right? Uh, this represents more or less what was in there. And it, some of them were just arcane. Others were numerical, uh, purely numerical, but but we're happy to assume that our Americans have gone native, and so there's not a big issue with that. And uh, many of them were an attempt of the annotator to express ambiguity out of context. Uh, and, and, and we're going to work with that, right? So for us, what is a date? A date is a number, right? A, a date is a continuous number, which happens to be written in weird ways. Uh, it's not our jobs to... Uh, at least in this scope, on how it's printed, but uh, we consider that's the UI or the operating system. What we're going to focus on is when exactly, right? Uh, so every project has a minimum granularity. In the case of most historical stuff, would be a day, a whole day. We don't care about hours, minutes. Uh, and then sometimes we need to be more imprecise. Uh, and the real question is how can we express that imprecision in a way that both humans and machines uh, can jointly make sense of it. Now, if we want to think about that, we've got to think a bit about roles. Uh, it might be the same person, it might be machines, uh, but somehow we have to think with different hats. Uh, and uh, we have the scholar. I, I think of an analog humanist when talking about the scholar, right? They, they express their knowledge, they reason in nuance, they need to express that nuance, and they don't have the means. Uh, they're afraid of being wrong, uh, and the real challenge is how can they make numbers out of their nuanced knowledge? Uh, and then we have the guesser. Uh, the guesser would express an opinion or an estimation uh, about, about when. And typically that would be a machine learning model, one that does some kind of regression. It needs some specific mathematical properties, a, a loss function that has to be differentiable, but somehow it has its own needs. Uh, and, and the thing is that an opinion can be expressed in many different ways. Uh, so the, the most typical way is uh, classification, right? We cut our time in, in pieces, and then we say, which time did you like? And that's very good for machines. They're very good at that. But it's extremely limiting to us. Uh, essentially, if we really want to make use of it, not that useful. Um, we can have a moment. That would be modeled as a regression neural network or something like that. Uh, that is quite hard to tame, uh, and uh, it also has also a few problems. Right? We could have an interval. It would be a regression of bounds. Uh, once more, that's another way of expressing maybe some kind of ambiguity has its problems as well. It could be a Gaussian. It's roughly then, uh, but I'm not totally certain. A and that also has its own limitations, right? Or it could also be a Monte Carlo approximation, right? Let's have a neural network that gives a, a thousand opinions and see how the, the whole cloud of opinions forms. So the third role is the judge, right? And the judge does uh, performance evaluation. They are the ones who has to tell us who's right and who's wrong and how much. Uh, so usually what they, what they fundamentally are is a metric that satisfies our perceived notion of performance. It's typically in a range of zero and one. Uh, and there must always be the transitive property, right? If A is better than B and B is better than C, then A is definitely better than C. Right? It can be asymmetrical, although that's not the tradition, and for good reason. 
And more than that, which is, that was what the judge is, uh, the judge has to uh, uphold a few standards, right? So the first one is that it must not have favorites. It must be somehow uh, objective, right? So it must not favor specific data sets. It must not favor specific methods. Uh, but it must also be winnable. If, if Koch himself made an estimate, it should get a perfect score and not below perfect. Uh, and it must not be gameable. And gameable is a big problem. It's more or less there must not be a strategy uh, where uh, someone, regardless of the data they're analyzing, can drastically improve their performance. Uh, so the solution we're proposing for that is that we can model all of this as densities functions. Uh, and densities functions are practically curves with a finite surface. That, that's that broad. And even a specific moment, a point in time, since we have a minimum granularity in our, content, in our project, has also its own surface. Uh, and we can say a lot about the synergies, uh, but uh, what's the pointer? Yeah. So the, the one that's really important and dangerous is this one. The, the scholar more or less trains the, the predictor uh, through, uh, through the data, and then the predictor uh, gives back answers to the scholar through the analysis. And if somehow uh, there's not a good understanding of this exchange, we can be way, way wrong. So let's see a bit about how we can model ambiguity uh, in, in the case where humans can talk. Okay. Um, so we have the, the standard way, the way that has already been used extensively before any machine learning was out there, is the not before, not after, also known as from to. It's ideal for scholars. They're familiar with it. They can understand it. They can reason about it. Uh, and for example, in our, in our context, it, it makes a lot of sense when you care about the internal charter features, which would be the textual features. Right? Whatever is in the text gives you specific hints so that you can put bounds on your knowledge. Uh, now, if we go a bit into the statistics literature, which I'm really a tourist in, I'm not a statistician in any way, uh, we would talk about this as uh, complete data being a precise date, uh, interval censored being a range in time, or uh, left and right censored being uh, unknown uh, boundaries. Uh, so the thing is that that literature cannot directly help us because more or less it was developed for a totally different kind of thing. It was meant to predict engine failures and things that are highly regular. But in our case, every datum, every document, it's its own unique snowflake. So assuming regularities from one to the other and therefore an easy model on ambiguity, uh, that is global, doesn't really make sense. Now, the other kind of ambiguity that we could easily uh, make our scholars understand without them having to, to take math courses would be the give or take, right? Give or take, we could say that it refers in math speech to a Gaussian and how much you give or take would be the deviation. Uh, it, it's even better suited for guessers who, whether they're humans or machines, who don't want to put all their eggs in one basket, right? They want to somehow spread out a bit uh, their, their guess. And, uh, and in, in practice, what, what we've seen is that this is the kind of opinion someone would express when they look at external features in the charter terminology, which would be uh, things that have to do with the nuance quality, like materials, techniques, things like that. Now, there comes a different question, which is normalization, right? So normalization, practically in this sense, would mean how many guesses are we allowed to have? Uh, so, there's more or less what standard in statistics is having a probability density, which would mean a sum of one. Uh, and that's what all guessers must, must have. We could also have what we call a plausibility density, which has a maximum of one. And that has to do with the fact that uh, it, it must be winnable. Now, uh, going a bit uh, hasting up a bit my presentation, Pre uh, precision is how we propose to measure things. It's roughly how much of our guesses fall within the ground truth, which is what the scholar put in. 
Uh, and since maybe not all samples are equally hard, we might want to weigh every sample, every chart, or every prediction uh, with uh, how, how big was the surface of, uh, of the ground truth. Um, so our proposals, uh, and that's exactly where we would like pushback, is that everything is an ambiguous instant. Anything naturally length, uh, lengthy should be modeled as two or more moments, right? A life is a birth and death. And so we keep intervals only for ambiguity. Opinions should be density functions. Uniform and Gaussian curves are enough to express most uh, ambiguity. The role dictates uh, the normalization. Uh, and performance evaluation should not be favoring any guesser type. Uh, after all, apples and oranges are fruit. Uh, and we should be able to make sense of that. Uh, so. We have a small demo online with a simple UI element uh, realizing a bit how could a scholar input that data. Uh, please come and visit it and, and attack me with why I'm wrong rather than anything else. <laughs> Thank you very much.